Welcome to the 50th episode of the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblox, and y'all know my co-host, Justin, awkward photo op bird, and uncle, lifesaver Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all things Harley and Harley related, and Nutsack, the last EC bag you will ever want or need. On today's episode, we brought it home, the world record for Harleys in a Parade. Whoa. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, you got all the good enthusiasm enthusiasm on the last episode. Oh, the one we, the no, first no, no, time no, no, we no. did this one? <laughs> Don't you fucking say we. <laughs> well, we recorded it. No, I, uh, I talk into a microphone. Yeah. This is what I do. Yeah. Yeah. All, you do all that stuff with that. A wise board. man once said, don't make your problems my problems. That's right. Fuck boy. All right. Well, <laughs> so we actually record this a week ago, a week and ago. then for some reason my computer decided to crap out, and that's why we didn't release an episode last week. <laughs> Crapple. <laughs> so we are doing this again. <laughs> yeah, uh, we are. Yeah. Take two. <laughs> yeah. So what's going on, guys? It's, I haven't seen you in a week. No, no. I mean, yeah, a whole fucking week, man. Spent a bunch of money this hold week. Hold on, hold on. We we uh, applause in order. Roadblock got his five k service, guys. Oh hey, five k, hey! <laughs> man. Yeah. How's it feel? It's it's good. I'm yeah. really shocked. I saw that bike back in your garage, really? and not something else. Yeah, uh-huh. you went to a dealership. What do you mean, really? Man, I'm, I'm I'm keeping this bike for the long haul. I mean, you at either least walk, two years. At least two years. <laughs> I mean, you either walk out with a shirt or a new bike. So, well, yeah. I I brought home my bike, but I did get something new there. Was it? I, was it just oil? Well, that came with it too. <laughs> but so there's got to be something else. But I got the uh, heart a solid mount or fixed mount. Uh, what is it called? Tour pack. Oh, for your tour pack. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm done with that fucking shaking thing. Yeah. That it seems like all detachable all tour packs do it, yeah. do it. And let's face it, I'm never going to take that damn thing off. No. no. <laughs> so I thought that I might, mm-hmm. but after having it on there, I love it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I can't. I can't see it without it now. Oh no. yeah. But especially, uh, I mean, especially when we carry around such expensive helmets. Like yeah. even on yeah. the lower end, you're talking a two hundred dollar helmet plus a two hundred dollar cardo plus usually a hundred to two hundred dollar GoPro. I mean. Oh yeah. Well, then that's like, a lot of money. To I mean, sit you under throw your wife's helmet in there. Yep. You know, same for me. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's nice too because I can lock up my man purse and not have to worry about anyone messing with it. Yeah. And it's not just, that anyone would, but you'd be shocked. It's, I had, it's I, had a, I had a lady it's a checking out my uh, my nutsack yeah. at the airport. Yeah, because she wanted one. She liked it. She's like, "Oh, that's cute." I was like, "Oh, oh thank you." Oh, I felt nice. It's, it's nice. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, but speaking of uh, get lowered in cycles, I got my uh, first big shipment of chubby shuttle parts order. Ooh. The chubby shuttle, yes. Yeah. Stage one. I can't wait. You got stage, stage one for it. Nice, nice. Dy- dy- dino jet power vision. Ooh. Going big this time, boys. There you go. <laughs> see if it's see if it's better than the fuel pack. Oh God, it's got to be right. Got to be. <laughs> well, this is the one that they can actually kind of hook into and map on the dyno itself right? correct yes yeah. and this is the one that has the screen that mounts to your bars and you can constantly oh, oh you got that one. Oh, i got the i got oh. the bad boy so you can adjust your maps on, on the fly, fly. Yep. yeah that's awesome mm-hmm. so back in 2010 the greeks hosted a major harley davidson parade which overtook the world record by having 2404 harleys participate and complete the ride on Saturday, October fifth, two thousand nineteen, Paris took Paris, Texas, took that record back. For those who aren't aware, Adam Sandoval and Paris Harley Davidson hosted a parade to bring home the world record, and it was at a closed airfield near Paris, Texas. We, the Harley community, blew the record out of the water by having three thousand four hundred and ninety-seven complete the parade over a thousand more than the previous record holders however there were more than that many bikes that showed up that's a lot of fucking bikes it was so many bikes (laughs) so so since we recorded this last week last time i had some had a chance i was some downtime you know very very little downtime that i have (laughs) 
<laughs> and I looked up what other motorcycle world records there were. Uh-huh. And most of them were like, ah, eh, longest wheelies and, you know, having to do with speed or stoppies and, you know, how many fucking people you can, like, put, put on, on a, a motorcycle. Bike. Yeah. That had uh, to be Chinese. I think it was in India or something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but some of them uh, that, that I thought that we could do, at least one oh, that I thought we could do. We as in us three? Yes. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it is the most office chairs pulled by a single Harley and, well, and people sitting in them as well. And I think, the, <laughs> yes, office chairs. With people in them being pulled by one Harley. And I think the number was only like 22 or something like that. It wasn't very many. So we need to find 23 suckers who's willing to get into an office chair and tether them all together. And I think they only pulled them like 20 yards or something. Something really, some short distance. I mean, it's just office chairs, obviously. Max speed, two miles an hour. Oh, my God. God, you'd be feathering the clutch center. So is this something you want to try? I mean, yes. this is something we could absolutely, absolutely do. Absolutely, dude. All what right. a ridiculous fucking record to have. I mean, I was like, yeah, because I was looking at all of them, and they were like, you know, the you know fastest speed or most donuts or longest ride without hands, you know, and or, or most yoga positions. How long was the longest ride without hands? It was like 185 miles. Oh, damn. I was going to say, because I might have... Came close to that one on the way back. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not even close. 185 miles. We could actually go for that. 185 miles. Yeah. That's on I-10. Three hours. Yeah, that's doable in Texas for sure. Yeah, you hop on I-10 going out towards El Paso. But there's nothing. Nope. Put it on cruise control and just have some people blocking the lanes for you just in case. Yep. Oh, you'd totally do that one. I had I had 25 miles just because I was bored. <laughs> <laughs> And that was in 35 traffic. So imagine if we had an open highway. Yeah. That'd be pretty dope. Yeah. So yeah. Be- before, we, before we go into the <laughs> world record that we were part of, I want to give a huge thank you to all that have donated for their chance to win a set of stretch saddlebags color matched to their Harley. These bags are perfect for those long road trips. And well, for those that don't know, Advan Black is showing their support for our cause to help veterans and has hooked us up with a set of bags to raffle off to help us raise money for Project Clean Slate, where we get a Harley, customize the hell out of it, and give it away to a veteran. Here's the bonus. Between Two Wheels is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, so you can write off your donation on your taxes as charitable giving. Head over to BetweenTwoWheels.com and click on the Project Clean Slate link to enter for your chance to win today. So. How dare you pitch that in the middle of the episode? Oh, you asshole. Huh? Good God. Commercials? What the fuck? How dare we? Oh, there was another record. <laughs> it was most most motorcycles started at once. We could have done that in Paris. We could have done that in Paris. Because we had the number. Oh, really? Well, yeah. Do you remember like a ballpark? It was like 3,100 or something like that. Oh, man. We could have done it. Yeah. We could have broke. I think it was like two or three records we could have broke that day. But I wonder how they would actually gauge that. Verify that they actually turned on. Yeah. Or you didn't have not, some. Not my fucking problem. Piece of shit yeah. panhead shovelhead in the group. He's over there kicking. Couldn't start. He's just kicking the shit out of that thing. <laughs> there was a guy kickstarting on the, the line when I was yeah. going through. Uh. So, we had well over 4,000 motorcycles show up. Yes. Yep. And as we heard it from the official Guinness dude, roughly 500 bikes were not counted or were disqualified for multiple reasons. One, they couldn't verify the wristband's RFID chip. And what this is, is every as soon as you registered, they put a RFID tag around your wrist so that it could count how many folks crossed the finish line. I thought that was a really great idea. Yeah, it is. But it was people weren't thinking about it. We weren't instructed. Really. There was, yeah, yeah, there there was, was no, no instruction for that. Um, so what caused this is people tucking into their jackets or not riding close enough to the sensor to be picked up. So for those who don't know, there's three methods that Guinness uses to confirm a world record. For this event, there's a guy at the starting line clicking every single bike that went by. Then they had a camera that was picking up all of the um, numbered stickers on the headlights. 
And then that was verified through um, video. And then they also had the RFID tracking. Yeah. I heard a lot of people, and I don't know how true this is, I heard a lot of people took the stickers off. Yeah. yeah a I lot heard of it a couple times. I never saw it, but I definitely heard it. And that brings us up to the next thing. They did not have a number identifier on their headlight. Yeah. So that was one of the issues. Some bikes didn't make it across the finish line, so they died on the airstrip. And, I, and I, I've heard that most all of them who started it did finish. I think it was a very small number, onesies, twosies. Yeah. And then some bikes never left the staging area. Those were the panheads. <laughs> <laughs> so... With any major event, there's always going to be controversy. Dun, dun, dun. So, we as Between Two Wheels, not as Johnny Roblox, Justin Bird, or Uncle Ken, but as Between Two Wheels, neither agree nor disagree with what we're about to say. It is our job to report on what we have heard and saw, as there are some influential people speaking for and against what went on the day of the event. Here's a recap of those stories. Dun, dun. I know. I feel like we're like missing like sound law, effects right like now. Law and order right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, bikes started showing up as early as 6.30 a.m. To begin staging, these folks had to wait over an hour after the parade started to begin their journey, where folks that came in much later got to start and therefore end much sooner. I wasn't even up at 6.30. <laughs> Damn, you suck, man. <laughs> well, neither were we. Come on. I was up. Were you? I, yeah. I, I woke up get, at I 8. Had, I had to get up, get dressed, and go get breakfast, man. Yeah. It was a good breakfast. I, a, you know, nice. well, decent. I didn't get breakfast I had to capitalize so on that, that free breakfast. My... Well, I mean, that paid-for breakfast that comes with my hotel. <laughs> <laughs> it's complimentary yeah. biscuits and gravy. Yeah, Choctaw was not that nice. <laughs> Well, no shit, right? <laughs> yeah. They're like, let's be downstairs at 8. I'm walking out the door at like 7.53. <laughs> so to kind of go into this one, I think the organizers had one mindset of how they were going to stage all the bikes and get all of them out at the same time. And they were just overwhelmed by how many bikes showed up. Oh, well, yeah. I think the end goal was let's get as many bikes to fit as possible, not let's get these bikes fit in a way to where first come gets to first leave. Like that's you yeah, know, yeah. obviously not going to be top priority. No. So, well, as, and, and like, like you said, you know, just because you got there early, it doesn't mean that you were going to get to leave early. That was never said. And that was, but that was not, yeah, that was never yeah. said, but also people who got there late and ended up way out on the apron. Oh yeah. Way, way All out the people there. People on the overflow were the last ones. They out. were, they were there for a long damn time. Yeah. yeah. So we saw both sides of the spectrum for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People that showed up late left really late, and people that showed up early also left really late. Yeah. But really, the the people who showed up in the middle. Oh yeah, they got the period. best. Yeah, they, they, got they absolutely up. did get the best. But they probably waited in the registration line the longest. And probably. in the line Ooh. just to get mm -hmm. into the airport. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, in I the, was out to the highway from the time that we got there. To where we walked up to the front to stand in the shade, mm -hmm. the line was already backed up. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it was insane. And that was within 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was to the horizon. Did y'all see TJ's video, how they actually wound the line back between those hangers? Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know that was going on. That yeah. was that yeah. was what kept that line off of the highway. Yeah. Well, they, they started doing that about an hour yeah. after we had gotten up to the front yeah. to hang out mm -hmm. because it was again stretched out all the way to the highway and then down the highway yeah so yeah we were just off the highway when when we got in and we mm -hmm. got in about 30 minutes to an hour after you guys yeah so they must have done it right after we had gone through because yeah it was pretty pretty bad yeah it's about the time your folks came up and mm -hmm. were hanging out with us yeah which was funny because they walked right up in front of us and we were like, I was screaming, Mom! Mom! <laughs> Mom! Mom! <laughs> so, um, but we'll, she was confused as hell. She was she? absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so one of the issues with how they staged it, it, they were blocking the exit. And one of the things for the world record is it had to be continuous. So they couldn't have significant yeah, no, breaks could be, yeah, between well, bikes. And, and. And yeah, I guess that significant part, I guess it, it's up to the, the Guinness guy as to yeah. what is considered a significant break. 
But I mean, there wasn't. I don't. From what I saw, there was never more than maybe twenty yards between yeah. a bike. Well, at the at the finish line, we were stacked up. Oh yeah. So that part, yeah, it is what it is. But they nothing ever broke it. Yeah, they cleared the space for all the bikes to roll out. So I get why they let those bikes go first. It sucks that if you got there at six thirty a.m., but you didn't have to get there at six thirty a.m. That's right. Nope. So, but hey, people came in. There was no way showed to know. up. Yeah, I mean, there shit happens. But I do understand people's frustrations for that. There were only twelve porta potties available for use. Six women, six men. That's some shit. Though <laughs> most of the men Boo. and some women simply watered the field next to the hangers. God, that was so funny. It's fucking Texas, man. <laughs> Um, so according to a website that, uh, uncle Ken found, cause he can find any random shit on Seriously. the internet, um, like there that. should have been at least 38 porta potties. Now, porta potties are not cheap to rent. No, no. So, and you're going to hear this common theme throughout the list of shit that we have, that we found, uh, people complaining about, but money for something that didn't really have a budget yeah so it didn't have a return on yeah, yeah there was no yeah, there was there no was, return on yeah. any of this so we're looking at about 300 dollars a day for one porta potty that's nine thousand ten thousand dollars just in porta potties if they would have went to the recommended amount yeah so and add an additional 15 percent to that number of porta potties if there's alcohol involved yeah oh, wow <laughs> jesus <laughs> That fun, was a, fun facts. That was a checkbox on that calculator. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, for like concerts oh, and man. festivals yeah. and stuff. Well, I, mean, I get it. Once yeah. you break that seal, Which, man, yeah. It's, yeah, it's done. It's done. Yeah. Um, another complaint. There was only three to four food trucks on site. Now, here's the thing about food trucks. This is Paris, Texas. If you sneeze, you've missed it. Pretty much. So all these food trucks are probably coming in from March, much larger cities, Dallas, Texarkana, whatever, to be there. Now, we don't know how many committed to show up and simply didn't show up. And the number of participants grew significantly the last two to three days before the event. Yeah, that that ties into the porta potty as well. Because yeah. at where we were sitting at, you know, a week prior to the event, 12 was okay. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it, you know, went up by almost 200%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm guilty of this. I, of course you are. Tracy and I registered 15 hours before the pre-registration closed. So You're a piece of shit. Yeah, I acknowledge that. It's for uh, a good cause, man. You could have just registered a long time ago. Yeah. Anyways, um, so again, I, I can't blame the hosts and the people who were trying to put this massive event together on the food trucks not showing up. Again, they, they may have booked 10 food trucks. Oh, yeah. And... Only three or four showed up. They may have asked 200 food trucks to yeah. show up. Yeah. We, so, we don't know any of the details on that. Yeah, I guess we can go ahead and say this. We don't know who Adam and, to. and Cody at, Harley, at Paris Harley Davidson talked to no. or what they did or didn't do and who told them to pound sand or, yeah. or yeah, whatever. Exactly. If they only asked three and all three showed up, eh, um, maybe a mistake. Yeah. M- might have been a mistake. Yeah, but, but that's... I highly doubt that was the case. Yeah. Just based off of numbers alone. Another one, people should have been allowed to go into the hangers. God, this is the dumbest argument I've heard. <laughs> so there are people are still talking about it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. This could Even not... Brad was on this side. He's like, that would have solved all the problems. I was like, mm, no. Shut up, Brad. <laughs> and, and that's why we make fun of Brad. <laughs> but this simply could not have happened. Plain, simple. Nope. The airport. <laughs> Plain. Yeah, see what I did Fuck there? Fuck off. <laughs> God, I quit. <laughs> uh, the airport is a semi-regional airport that only private-owned planes use. It's not a commercial airport. Yes. The hangars are leased out to private citizens. You cannot expect those people who pay rent to allow them to be open to a bunch of folks to huddle into. No. And yeah. the primary concern here is the extremely expensive planes and other personal property that's being stored in in those hangers. Yes. That one close to the registration tent had a legit private jet. 
I'm not talking about a small jet that might be chartered out. No, we're talking about a personally owned private jet. It's like a Learjet or some shit. As well as a $60,000 Audi. Yeah. And one point that that Ken brought up last time is the amount of tools. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All the other stuff. Yeah. That could easily grow legs and walk away. Yeah. There's just no fucking way that would work. So one of the hangers is leased by someone who was sponsoring the event and he la- allowed a small group of people including the between two wheels crew to spend some time in there now this space that we were in was segregated from the actual hangar itself as there's a million dollar plane in there and yeah. he didn't want anyone fucking with it i mean which is his right i mean exactly it's his property his essentially fucking property yeah so the hangers if they were owned by the airport and no one was leasing them sure you could open them up but then you're going to start seeing people crowd into them which is then going to cause more heat to be trapped yeah Mm -hmm. so you go go back to high school when you all had to crowd in the gym yeah yeah and just sit there for like a one 60 year old fan blowing in from the door yeah Yeah. that didn't do shit yeah go go back to high school when when you had to go to a pep rally and all you were doing was fucking sitting there and remember how fucking hot it was yep and how peppy you are. And then and multiply it by 10. All that pep. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and then th- to, to that point, I mean, I got, I didn't get a ton of hate, but I did see a couple comments. So like, wow, you guys were sitting in there uh, in the AC drinking beer when there was veterans out there passing out. Oh. I was like, okay, well, t- say for example, if Adam would have spent all day out there, you saw the crowd that was around him after the announcement. That was ridiculous. Take that same concept of people crowding together and put the leader of the group in the middle of it that no, that's not going to fucking work. They needed a separate room to make the calls, get the information that they need to get to. I mean, it's, it's not quite, you know, you know, Justin Bieber status to where it's, it becomes like a unsafe to him, but it's just, it's not logically logistically, you know, a smart move. It becomes a hassle and people are going to hate no no matter what, no matter, no matter what we say or how we break it down. People are going to be pissed off anyways. Yeah. I, I like how they ignore the fact that we raised over, you know, $54,000 for a veteran charity, which that $54,000 is going into a business. So that's going to be split up in, and create a lot more good than just, you know, a $54,000 donation. That's going to, you know, seed into other things. And they're they're mad that. But it know, doesn't matter. They didn't get to go sit in the hangar. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I I I have issues with people saying we were just in there drinking beer. Yeah. First of all, I didn't have any beer. I didn't no have one a had single beer. beer. No one had any beer. I did have a couple bottles of water. Yeah. I had one bottle of water in there, and I had one that was handed to me outside. But it's also, I, I know some of the, like, like Cody and some of the other bigger people that had a lot more responsibility than I did, spent a lot more time in there. But, like, me and Maxwell, we maybe spent a combined half hour throughout the entire day inside that hangar like yeah. if you combine all of our little trips in there i don't think we were each of us were in there for more than half an hour look i mean and we took we took in who we could yeah and obviously like it started with maxwell coming to you justin correct and then you were like well what about roadblock and uncle ken and so then we went in and i got in there and i was like fuck this i want to i'm going to take control i'm going to bring the, you know our wives in so i sent them a message brought them in and i waited a few minutes i was like all right, nobody cares about our wives being in here. Let's get Team Bradley and Hasso in here. Yeah. But, I mean, for, no matter what, people are going to hate. Yeah, so People are going to bitch. Yeah. You know, I have nothing to apologize for. I enjoyed my air conditioning. <laughs> and my Bloody Mary. Fuck off. I, I just, I didn't spend enough time in there to feel bad about it. I'm pretty sure I stole that Bloody Mary. I didn't, uh, well, there was, I didn't reach the no benefits. There was no jar for money to right, go no. into. And it was just yeah. I didn't ask either, so. Yeah. Um, you guys so, aren't making it better. <laughs> one of the complaints. I have nothing to apologize uh, for. They can hate me all they want. I don't yeah, give a shit. No. <laughs> um, there was not enough water. Now, the event hosts did run out of water, but was trying everything they could to obtain more water for the people. And they did. Yep. For now, I did some research on here, and people say my our research is okay. But I'm cool with that. <laughs> it's better than I'm not good doing with mediocre. Any, it's better than not doing any research. <laughs> Um, but a pallet of water, so 1,890 16 ounce bottles cost $500 for proper hydration. We'll say four bottles of water per person times 6,000 people. We're looking at just over 
thousand dollars to have water and they were being handed out for free. Yeah. The only water cells that were going on was from a charity tent raising money for scholarships and the food trucks. Yep. So so I did I did hear some interesting news this last week. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, so the Mar- the Marine Corps, they were raising, they were selling bottles of water and the raffle tickets for that rifle Correct. to raise money for their charities and toys for, and toys for tots. That was the other thing that okay. it was going towards toys for tots as well. So the first two pallets of water were given to them. Correct. Or, correct. Okay. The first two pallets of water were given to them out of the generosity of Adam. Correct. Oh, and Cody, you know, yeah. the organizers. So I don't know. I mean, I personally don't have a problem with that. I don't either. And they I mean, were selling them for like a buck. It's not like they were, you know, come highway to this, I robbery. didn't come to this event expecting shit to be given to me for free. No. I and mean, that's another point and, I brought and, up. And going anywhere, if you go to a concert, you know, yeah. you and you want to buy a beer, expect to pay $9. $8, <laughs> $8 yeah, for that beer, for yeah. that 12-ounce beer. Mm-hmm. You know. And they were charging a dollar. And Or, yeah, and $3 for a bottle of water at a concert or $4 or whatever. Oh, no, at Coda, it's $6 now. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> and that's for what a 16 ounce bottle of water uh, 20 ounce Dasani yeah yeah and bullshit that, yeah <laughs> Coca-Cola has to make their money man. but yeah I mean it's right <laughs> like I was saying it's like it's not like people are acting like it was like fire festival like they paid thousands of dollars for a ticket and we're expecting like you luxury paid, cabanas and hors d'oeuvres being handed out no, you, you donated paid 15 dollars to you a charity you donated 15 dollars to a charity so you could and participate it, in it and event. it was all up front that was it yeah that, that so, was it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was never a promise of food trucks or anything. We didn't have that shit last time. Nope. We had that one food truck at the dealership that ran out of food at like 9.45 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he was happy. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so another complaint was that there was not enough shade. Now, the event took place at an airfield. Plenty of shade being thrown around. And there was, <laughs> <laughs> there was little in the form of shade due to the timing of the event. Some suggested that tents should have been provided as a way to get people out of the sun. And for some perspective, I called local. Now, local is Dallas, Fort Worth area tent companies. And I wanted to see what the pricing looked like. A 40 by 80 foot tent, good for about a thousand people, $2,000 a day to rent. With the estimated. To rent. To rent. With the estimated six thousand people at the parade the hosts would have had to spend an additional twelve thousand dollars for the tents minimum 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 That's and just for the tents Fuck yeah me. so i'm not saying they should have or shouldn't have you know rented these tents but i just wanted to provide a little bit of insight into what was actually you know what that would cost and that would have also been over nineteen thousand square feet yeah. Of additional space. Well, and then they'd have had to have them set up, which would have had to take place the day before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which means they'd had to got permission from the airport to get out there and do that mm-hmm. and then leave them there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nope. Not going to happen. I don't even think you can. You'd have to shut down the entire airport. Just yeah. think I'm, about it. If, if the, a right gust of wind caught that while a plane was trying to take off, you're, you're killing people at that oh, point. Yeah. You They'd have to shut down the whole airport for two days. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> um, it's not feasible. Yeah. And where would, it, where would they have put the tents? They would have had to pay to have that the lawn mode or the yeah. field mode yeah. down. And then where would have people gone to the restroom? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Just creating more problems for ourselves. Yeah, because that, that field was all hay. Yeah. 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 Hi. Hi. Uh, another complaint was that there was not enough paramedics there to tend to all the people who needed medical attention. Now, Uncle Ken and I spoke to some paramedics, and they had every available unit at the airfield. Now, I can't blame the city for not having enough paramedics to cover a 25% population increase. Yeah. And the first responders were running ragged. So, I mean, they had... The entire time to provide aid. They had four ambulances there. Yeah. And at least one side-by-side or... Oh, they, had a, they had a couple side-by-sides that were EMT side-by-sides. Yeah. And you got to think, they also have to get paid. Yeah. You know, you're paying, somebody is paying the city to lease that time. It's not like just the individual 
paramedic was there with his bag. Yeah. It was the whole fucking truck, and each truck had two people in it. Mm-hmm. That'd I be mean, like San Antonio getting an additional 372,000 people. Oh, the equivalent? Yeah. Yeah. Like, that is ridiculous. <laughs> that's a like, staggering number. That's a staggering number. That's Hurricane Harvey. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, That's really, why you saw, yeah. Yep. That's why they went to here to, well, actually, they didn't send many here because they thought the hurricane was going to hit us, but they sent them all to Austin and Dallas-Fort Worth. Yeah. So I do want to mention, and it's important to say it, Nobody posted anything negative about the work that the EMTs were doing. The complaints were primarily around that there was not enough yeah. of them. The number of staffing, not the quality of staffing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of staffing, there wasn't enough staff. Now, there was at least 20 volunteers just at the registration just site. Just doing registration. And I know some of Maxwell's <laughs> entourage <laughs> got pulled in and voluntold <laughs> to help. Uh-huh. Well, um, see, see, they did that to themselves. Yes. <laughs> so they took, they bought his shirts, his black shirts that have his logo on the front, and then one of the wives or one of the ladies took and ironed on security under the back of the shirts. Mm-hmm. And then, so when they got there, everyone was like, oh, you're with Maxwell. Come do this. <laughs> and they were like, okay. Uh, so just so everyone's aware, every person, every staff member that was there was a volunteer. Now there were some vendors there that they weren't part of the staff. Yeah. And some of them were pulled in from Paris Harley Davidson to assist. Now they were probably being paid, but yeah, maybe. a lot of the people there were volunteers. They would have been working on Saturday anyways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. all they all work on Saturdays. So uh, I'm I can't say there wasn't enough staff. Yeah, we did we did the math the last time we did this. I'm not gonna do it again, but it was a staggering amount of like hours of just registration time. Even yeah. if you had twenty people, it was still going to take a, a good chunk of hours. Oh yeah. Just to get through four thousand people. Now the favorite comment that I saw was where was corporate Harley Davidson? And this oh, came up. Oh, this came up so much, especially after the event. Yeah, yeah. last year and this year. Oh, yeah. What many people don't understand or don't know is corporate did have someone there. Great guy. And he assisted with all kinds of things in an unofficial capacity. Yeah, he was kind of a, I mean, he's had his hand in big events. Yeah. So he kind of knows, you know, what to expect, kind of what to do. Yeah. He tried to get one of their show trucks out there. Uh, but apparently they, it was already booked for that weekend way in advance. Yeah, yeah like in Arizona was, or something yeah, that like that. was the only thing that he could have done. Yeah, it was in Vegas. Like Hot Bike Festival or some, something yeah. like that. Um, now, <laughs> here's why Harley Davidson Motor Company could not openly participate. This is a community or a grassroots driven event, not a Harley Davidson event. Harley Davidson's a global brand and by supporting a particular dealership, in this case, Paris Harley Davidson, they would have been seen as playing favorites to a single franchise that would open the door for Harley Davidson to have to support every dealership on a global scale that wants to do an event like this or any kind of big event. Um, Which gets me thinking, like, do they do they sponsor any events that are not like expo related? Not really. Yeah, Uh, yeah. I've never seen them like they they have some charities that they will allow their brand to be put on Mm -hmm. as a sponsor but i want to say it's like muscular dystrophy or something like that oh wow um but nothing like this like rot rally and daytona and all that stuff not even sturgis Sturgis, yeah no they they don't officially sponsor those well and see and here's something to remember when you see the harley davidson semi pull up with all those test bikes that dealership how much was it like fifteen thousand dollars oh yeah it's a good chunk of change that they have to pay for that truck to be there for one day. One day, yeah. Now, granted, everything is provided to them, so like the staffing and everything to get the bikes going yeah. and everything, it's all handled, but it's still a good chunk of change. Yeah, it's an insane yeah, amount Yeah, but of money. for like the demo rides, it's usually the local Harley shops, Hog Chapter, their road captains who are leading those rides. It's yeah. not like the Harley truck comes with a driver who's also the main person who's running the demo mm-hmm. and then maybe one or two volunteers or, you know, 
assistance. Yeah, yeah but low. they unload and everything. Is what yeah, I was right, right. Yeah, it was just yeah. like the Indian ride that we did. Correct. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, everything else, it's yeah, you, you know, definitely have to sell a few bikes to make that money back. Oh yeah. Oh, a lot of a lot of t-shirts. Yeah. Now another piece of this, why Harley Davidson shouldn't really uh, sponsor an event like this, and I hate to say this, but it's liability. If they are hosting this event, oh yeah, and someone gets hurt, they're going to get sued because oh, yeah. that's that's the world we live in, and it sucks. But this is the same reason the three of us don't use our real names on our podcast or Justin's YouTube channel. It's because we we want to make it as hard as possible for someone to try and come and sue us. Yeah, and. It is what it is, but people are going to sue because it's quick, easy money, and there's lawyers out there who are willing to try. Yep. Better call us all. <laughs> so, you don't need a criminal lawyer. You need a criminal lawyer. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So all the issues we just spoke about are from other folks and do not represent Between Two Wills as a brand. For the people who spoke out about these issues, good for you. Hell Yeah. In a world where we tell people they should speak their mind and then criticize them for doing so, you have to be brave to speak out against anything. No matter what your opinion is or was for the event, it is your right to say what you feel. Amen. Yeah, that's why I don't fucking apologize for anything. Fuck yeah. all the haters. Now, when you we can come... have your opinion, your opinion's just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when we come back from our ad break with Nutsack, let's talk about the Bike and Bird Bring It Home Texas Roundup. Nutsack is the only EDC bag the crew carries, and for good reason. They're crazy and awesome. They get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in America with American waxed canvas, American leather, and American labor. We want you to join us in the two-week challenge. Buy a bag from them, use it for two weeks, and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear, they will give you a full refund. We absolutely love ours from carrying around extra mags for our concealed carry to earbuds sunglasses vape stuff and business cards it is great having less shit in our pockets and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down if you buy using our link nutsack will give you five dollars off to enjoy a beer head over to nutsack.com slash b2w that's n-u-t-s-a-c dot com slash be the number two w to get yours today and Sorry. we are back so I justin just be called the derailer that's <laughs> <laughs> all right so justin let's let's go over the texas roundup all right so essentially what the premise of the texas roundup is it stemmed from last year when me and uncle ken went we talked to way too many people after the event that said oh i would have loved to go i just didn't have anyone to go with uh, and I get that. I mean, a lot of people, especially I mean, if you've never ridden a long distance before, like over 400, 500 miles, doing it on your own is, it can be intimidating. Yeah, yeah. it absolutely can be scary. Yeah. Because, I mean, even if you have a, a quality bike, you know, you, you still worry, what if? Yeah. I mean, shit happens. What if you blow a tire? Shit happens. What if you throw a belt? Yeah. What if you get hit? Yeah, what if you get hit? You're, you're fucking alone. And that, I mean, that's kind of scary. Especially in Texas when going through so many rural areas. I mean, you can get hit at a four-way intersection on a farm road. Oh, yeah, and if they fucking take no off. No one fucking sees you. You don't have a, a cell phone service or you get injured where you can't reach your cell phone. Like, it's a scary thing. So yeah. uh, we hosted a, uh, what I deemed the Texas Roundup. We are basically making uh, a stop at every dealership between San Antonio and Paris, minus one, just because they were too close together. Uh, we started with five bikes uh, throughout the day. We went up and down. Some came in, some dropped out um, roughly 20 or so. I think the most we had was about 24. Uh, according to, to Roblox, the planning was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So not to blow smoke up your ass, but the planning I mean, go, was go great. It, man. it was really oh, good yeah. planning. Uh, the route was as good as it could have been. The, mm -hmm. the route that was planned was great. Yeah, all the detours sucked, but their yeah. detours they, they weren't happens, man. they weren't expected. Yeah, they absolutely were not expected. Yeah. The Waco one caught us off guard because they um, they shut down the entire interstate 
So to we one, had to take to one lane, right? To one lane. So we took a detour around that, and then ended up having to take a detour from that because the alternate route had an accident on it. So detouring from the detour. And this, and this was on a Friday that they did this yeah. on thirty five. Mm-hmm. Apparently, major, that's apparently it's like all the time. I mean, it's a major corridor. I don't yeah. see like my cousin. My cousin lives in Waco, and he even messaged me before it. He's like, "Hey." you guys need to be careful going through Waco because the construction's bad. And I remember the last time we went up to Dallas, it was bad. And I was like, oh, yeah, we, we know. But it wasn't that bad. Yeah. No, no. But it, but thankfully, shout out to Cardo, Cardo Communications. Oh, man. <laughs> Having our Pack Talk Bolds really helped. Um, we were able to get everything blocked. Everyone made it safe. Uh, I missed one uh, turn or uh, route planning, blocking intersection, but we were able to get that taken care of. Uh, and just the people that we met were super oh, cool. God, super yeah. cool dudes. Um, Coast, definitely Coast Guard Nick. Coast, Coast Guard, Guard Nick. He held his own. Nick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except for that fucking stereo. God damn it, dude. He he. If he did Can we not pull have his fuse next time, I know. Right. <laughs> if he didn't have his helmet on, he would be the ultimate bagger, bro. For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I we mean, get, he's got like six speakers going at full mm-hmm. blast. Maybe we can get him like an amps. affliction shirt. I was say we need to get get some rhinestones on his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and a rhinestone affliction shirt. Yes. Um, <laughs> now, we did have uh, one issue, um, and there's a lot of ha- heartburn about this. You know, one rider, I'm not going to say his name, but he was the one riding a trike. And <laughs> here's the thing. Whenever you host a public group ride, like what you did, Justin, the experienced riders have to adapt to the lowest skilled rider yep. and it was it was getting to the point where i was getting annoyed because we would have i think hasa was getting more annoyed than you which was hilarious oh yeah yeah oh, <laughs> he was triggered a few times but mm-hmm. the guy would create a large enough gap literally for an 18 wheeler to get into yeah yeah and he was on a touring it was like a legit harley trike not a makeshift trike no. it was a harley trike so they have cruise control and i think he did not understand how to maintain spacing. Yeah. You can't put on 70 and expect everything to be fine. You actually have to maintain a gap. What yeah. I think was his his biggest, I mean, this is totally guessing, but the bike with it being a heavier bike, it takes longer to stop. I think he was just really nervous to ride that close to a big group. Yeah, I mean, that could be possible. Because I believe I overhear his buddy saying that they don't ride in groups. Correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so that could be. I mean, that takes some getting used to. I mean, even oh, yeah. even when I'm riding, I usually keep, leave a little bit more of a gap than most people, just because I you know have a history. D- does he do that roadblock? I got enough of a gap to get up to fucking 14 miles an hour. And, <laughs> hey, when when we're riding, the gap's great. At a stop sign, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> hey, all I'm saying is I must have a pretty good gap to get up that fucking fast. <laughs> uh, but. Yeah. Uh, outside of one goof in Dallas, yeah. because the GPS didn't follow the waypoint, it took you the shortest route. No, it followed the waypoint. Oh, it did? That, that was my fault. Um, when I... That was uh, toll roads. Yeah. I had it disabled on my PC. I did not have it disabled on my phone. Hmm. So, I don't... I, something got messed up there. Um Try to take yeah. us up Dallas North Tollway, which yeah. which I wasn't familiar with the area. So I mean, I probably if I would have been more familiar with the area, I could have avoided that. But it's just one of those things that happens. Well, yeah. and if it wasn't and if it wasn't a group ride, oh yeah, we would totally we wouldn't have cared. Yeah. yeah, but to- you know, somebody's somebody would have had some sand in their vagina. Yeah, you know for that, sure. that we took them on a toll and made them pay ten dollars. Yeah, oh that that, that would have been a total of like five. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's but been still chump change. But it, people would bitch about it. Dig yeah. into their freaking child support money. So. Damn. I mean, just like with with any <laughs> you know, quote unquote big event, there's 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 things to learn from. Yeah, I mean that's, and I think that's the the biggest key is to be able to recognize those because I could just have my head in the sand and be like, oh, it was great, we all fucking made it there, it was awesome, everything was cool. <laughs> but obviously, that was not the case. It took but, us fucking fourteen hours to go four hundred miles. Um, well, normally a six and a half, seven six and hour. And a half hour ride. I, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. Tracy did it in six and a half hours yeah, when she so. left. Definitely some. I definitely took some things away on paper. It was mediocre. In it wasn't great on paper, but uh, just could have been a whole lot better. But yeah, I mean, the next this, time it will. It be. was still. It was still good. fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh mean, yeah. It was still a good time. I mean, look, this was your first major 
cross state it was a group yeah, ride legit cross yeah. state mm-hmm. and yeah shit happens but i think we all adapted and overcame very well yeah and yeah it was because of the bluetooth headsets that did it yep. for us <laughs> yeah um i'll uh, say the biggest mistake that i made was trying to get the dealerships involved and that was my main goal was trying to get as many people to come to this parade as possible and i thought involving the dealers would help that and it, it might have i mean i did see um the flyers i sent out at most of the dealerships so we at least drew up some traffic if nothing else uh, but if I were to do it again, I probably would not or involve the dealerships, but let them know that we're stopping at their nearest gas station. Yeah. Do yeah. Kind of like a remote thing. That way we can just, we can stop, we can stop gas. And go. Yeah. Yeah. Gas Cause having to stop for gas and the dealerships that pretty much doubled our stops. And that was, I just want you to so know long. all the Harley shops we stopped at. I didn't buy a single thing. Did, no, I mean, wow. no, didn't buy shit. Well, you didn't have your wife with you. Exactly. I was going to say either there's got to be a reason or like, is he blinking sideways? Yeah. Has he been, <laughs> has he been cloned didn't, or probed or something? I didn't lizard buy people? shit. I was so proud of myself. Hold on. Let me see your tongue. Okay. Now he's good. It's not, it's not split. <laughs> the birds were watching him. Those, those drone birds are watching him, man. The drone. Oh, fuck, fuck you. Off. <laughs> but, uh, so talking with Tracy now, She's my wife and she, she will not hold back. She's a professional event planner. Yep. And she didn't have anything negative to say about the bring it home event. Wow. And, and Tracy likes to bitch about things. She too. does like to bitch about stuff like that. Me and Tracy agree on three different things on the ride home. Are you sure she hasn't been captured? She didn't bitch about the event and she agreed with me on three different things. Well, did you check your tongue? As much as I can. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but no, she she saw what we saw and she she agreed that okay, it could have been done better, but that wasn't up to the organizers to really do. No. Yeah. And I mean, because you you didn't there was no way to know how many people were coming. Exactly. You know, you hope for two thousand four hundred and five. Yeah. You yeah, know, and, and then you 6, end up thousand people show up. That's like her trying to plan a full wedding and not having a even a guest list. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No <laughs> guest list. We're gonna have anywhere between twenty and two thousand people. Exactly. <laughs> like, how yeah. the fuck are you supposed to plan for that? Yeah. So this episode's closing argument, it's not gonna be an argument, but was the bring it home event worth doing? Fuck yeah. Absolutely. I, I, got, I got my participation trophy. <laughs> I, my my uh, certificate of compl- of uh, participation. Yeah, they're sitting at the Walgreens up here because that's the FedEx. Damn, you already got yours. Yeah, yeah. My coworker got his too. He got one for him, and he got a separate one for his dog that rode with him. Ah, that's awesome. <laughs> I was like, like you added the name. He goes, no, I got a separate one. He showed me the picture. It's two separate certificates with his name and his dog's name. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> So I had to get three, one for Tracy, one for myself, and then one for the Between Two Wheels cast. God damn. Nice. So, but yeah, there's uh, that. Weird, weird flex, but okay. There's that different tax bracket coming in. <laughs> <with it. laughs> but uh, fifth, we we participated in raising over $50,000 for 50, motorcycle 50, mission. 54145 I think 54 it was 54 and change. That's all I yeah, know. Yeah, 54 and change. For motorcycle missions. And if y'all don't know what motorcycle missions is about you're stupid no i'm just kidding it helps Not really. veterans yeah. and first responders stupid as fuck. deal with their ptsd <laughs> yeah, dumb shits. i got my hat yeah see it on. i was gonna wear my shirt today too i totally forgot yeah uh, I they, have a, they have a little package like a came with a hat a coin a patch uh some stickers uh and a button like you know those metal buttons yeah oh and a pen like a like the hog pins that oh, okay. every year. One of those. Mm. Yep. So. The one that's on my ugly jacket. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it was only like 25 bucks for that wow. whole pack. No, I got it. two shirts. I got one for me and the missus. But uh, I love that. I love that organization. I think what they're doing is awesome. And um, I talked to some of their guys and they were really excited for the Project Clean Slate. Like they knew what it was before I even told them. So. Sweet. It'd be cool to get them involved in it as well. I mean, it, it's a fucking no-brainer to partner up with them because all well, the I mean, connections they have the, the, and the, the skills ta- the, the skills they have the talents they have the connections they have the the 
the, the end goal, the, I don't know what you call it, the mission statement is, I mean, right there in line with it. So yeah, it'd be a no brainer. Yeah. But, uh, I did talk to Adam a little bit and he is wanting to do some type of uh, Paris rally, like an annual, like an thing. annual. Yeah. I mean, he didn't really go into details about it, but he was like, yeah, I want to do something because yeah, it, it seems there. like, it seems like everyone wants to do it in the, uh, the town. I mean, we, we said this last time, the town just absolutely fucking loves it. Oh yeah. They feel like they're in a big city for a weekend. You know, they get to see people from all over the country and, of course, their economy just booms for that one weekend. Oh, can you yeah. imagine? All the hotels. Can you imagine all, if mean, you add up everything? The, the gas station stops, the gas station food, the restaurants, oh, yeah. the hotels. I mean. The bars. The, the bars. bars. <laughs> um, I don't know if they have a Walmart. I'm sure they've got some sort of. Yeah, they have one. They have one Walmart. Yeah, I saw yeah. one. I mean, people, you know, stopping by, buying last minute supplies. Like, oh, I can only imagine all the people that went to the casino and spent money at the casino. Oh, fuck the casino. I mean, that's, of course, not Paris, but it's the <laughs> area. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Adam had to have talked to the city because obviously he had paramedics out there. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, it goes to, we don't know who Adam talked to. We don't know who Cody talked to. We don't know who said yes and who said yeah. no. Also, one thing to that point, um, I'm glad I remembered this because it was a pretty big thing, but the uh, location change. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. The convention People were center. saying that it was due to, to ego or something like that, which I'm having a hard time connecting those two dots. I don't know. But uh, the reason that the location was changed is, first off, we discovered this on the last episode, or last time we recorded this episode, is that due to that the original location, uh, being, you know, inside city limits and being a public place, you have to abide by the fire codes and all that kind of stuff. The bikes would not have fit. No. Not even close. Even if we would have had the entire parking lot, which brings me to the second point, the city took away a third of the parking lot because they were setting up, they needed to set up for concerts that were happening for the city later that night. Yep. So what they were already not going to fit. We might have fit if we would have been around the 3,000 mark, which I think that's kind of what they were looking at. It would have been fucking tight and uncomfortable oh, for sure. Uh, but once they took away the third of it, psh, not even fucking close. And yeah. then we get another 1,000 bikes on top of that. Yeah, The location change was the biggest blessing. Oh, yeah. And with the, the route? The route was completely blocked off. It was only Harleys past this point, so you completely eliminated the whole uh, another brand issue getting in. Yep. It was an absolute blessing. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels podcast to see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. Uh